Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. So today is part, I believe, 15. Um, if I have the number wrong, you can look at the title, but 15 of the Second Impressions series that I do. You guys really love this, I love this. If this is your first time visiting my channel, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to follow along, and you can check the playlist for the Second Impressions videos. But yes, this is a long time coming. I have a whole bunch of fragrances to go through, most if not all of which were blind buys. Yeah, most of them were. So the second impressions are kind of when I come back and tell you guys exactly what my experience was like. So we are gonna get into it. The first one I'm actually gonna start with is Masque Immortel um, by Atelier, Atelier des Arts. And as you can see, as always, the bottles are stunning. This is my first full bottle of Masque Immortel or of an Atelier des Arts fragrance. I bought this, as you guys know if you've been watching, because Lune Feline sold out um, when I thought I'd put it in my cart and I didn't, long story short, whatever. I still have my heart set on Lune Feline. I'm still doing the no buy, but that's a fragrance that is, yeah, it's definitely on my mind. So I would like to get it. And I kind of took a chance with this one and here's where it lies. So when I tried it out, I'm gonna spray it here just to remind myself. I knew it was gonna be risky, um, especially be more so because of the Immortel, less so because of the musk, because I adore a musk, but this is a hard one to wear, um, and I still stand by that. I don't think it's blind by safe. I don't think it's mass appealing, and I don't think it's an everyday fragrance, even if you like it. However, um, by sheer force of will <laughs> and actually just trying it out and, you know, playing around with it, I do like it more now than I did at the start. At the start, it was quite worrying how expensive it was and just like my mood when I was getting it, I just was really hoping this would fill some sort of gap that Lune Feline had left behind um, because I tried that one in a sample and at first it really didn't. It was so dusty and that's where it kind of threw me off. It, it really did smell very dusty and smoky and um, yeah, like it kind of just like scratchy on the throat. As I've worn it, I've enjoyed it more and more. I still don't think this is ever gonna be like my favorite of favorites in my collection, nor do I, you know, I don't think it's an easy wear, but um, I have liked wearing it. I'm gonna show you what I've layered it with that makes it more wearable for me personally. But even on its own, I have enjoyed wearing it kind of as like a me only fragrance. I really haven't tried this out on many people at all, maybe one person only. And um, yeah, it's, I don't know how other people would react to smelling this on me, especially people in my life that aren't actually into fragrance. Like they just like perfume here and there, but most people in my life aren't like frag heads. So I don't think this is like an everyday average person type fragrance. It's very niche smelling. Um, but what's nice, and I did not expect this one when I bought it, um, is that the gold flecks actually show up on your skin. I don't think you can see it here, obviously, on my camera. They're very, very little, but in person, actually this spray that I did has a whole bunch. There's at least 15 to 20 gold flecks on my hand right now. Sometimes you'll get more, sometimes you get less, but you always kind of get them, which is really nice. And I don't know why I didn't expect that, but I just figured they'd like get stuck in the bottle itself, but they don't. They really do show up on the skin, which is an added touch, I suppose, but yeah. I stand by that. I think if you know you like Immortel, then it's a really beautiful one. If you know you like dusty, smoky fragrances, I would say again, you should go for it. But if you're iffy on it, that would be the kind of fragrance where you should get a sample and try it out over some time and see how, basically do what I was doing now, but without the full bottle. Then the second fragrance is Chopal's um, Oud Malachi. And this is what I've loved layering with that on days where I just, I was like, okay, I wanna wear them, but 
how can I kind of make this more wearable for me? And right now I'm gonna spray it next to it instead of like a full layer. This is just a lot more of like a sweet, kind of boozy, slightly oud, like, but definitely like I get like cinnamon and it's boozy and woody and a lot more sweet. Like Musky Mortel has zero trace of sweetness. And I'm not saying every fragrance has to be that, but this just, it doesn't seek to really change Musky Mortel that much. It's still, you know, this is woody and tobacco-y in its own way, and it's all obviously like got oud in there, but I feel like it just helps complement it and make it more wearable. So I really liked layering them together, but this on its own is actually a very, very beautiful, like warm fragrance to wear in colder weather. So I've liked that on its own as well. And I feel like I've been more drawn to that than I thought I would be, kind of the opposite of Musky Martel where I was iffy to begin with. Then we get to the third fragrance and unfortunately this one's gonna be a bit negative, but this is Pink Flower by Pink Sugar um, Aqualina. This, again, I kind of knew. I feel like a lot of these fragrances I should have trusted my gut on. This is a Chypre, which is, you know, deduction number one in my book, only in my book. And the other thing is I've had horrible luck with any fragrances from Aqualina that are in the pink sugar range that aren't actually pink sugar. Like every flanker of pink sugar has not worked for me and I've tried a bunch. And this I admit is the best one of the bunch. This is the one that I will actually wear more than the others. The others have completely turned on me. Like I can't even smell them, some of them. I know, I don't know what it is, but this one, I feel like it's a lighter ship. It's not that ex intense. It's definitely more floral. I don't really get any of that original pink sugar in there. It's sweet, but in no way like a pink sugar sweetness. And it's nice. I mean, I like the bottle. It's not super negative. I would say again, like obviously out of the flankers, I prefer this the most and it was super inexpensive. So it's not like the kind of investment that an Atelier de, des Arts is. But personally for me, I think I have officially hopefully learned my lesson and will just stick with the original pink sugar. All right, so the next one is actually my only other fragrance that also has gold flecks in it. So by chance, they ended up in the same video and that is by Zhivago and I have the white gold. This is how it comes. I love that it comes with a base and it's a glass base. It's very heavy. You can definitely break it. It's like a paperweight. And the other, I don't know, slightly interesting thing about it, if you guys care, is obviously there are gold flecks in it, way less than um, the ones in Atelier des Arts, but this is a pumpless fragrance. So all the Zhivago ones that come like this are pumpless, and that just means you need to kind of move it back and forth a couple times before you spray it, and then you can spray it a couple times. This one also will get those gold flecks on your skin, but way, way less. I feel like there's less in there. They're also lighter and it takes a lot longer for them to come through. Um, because I think it's because it's pumpless, it kind of gets stuck in that atomizer thing. And I've gotten it a couple times on my skin, but I think it just captures it in there. Whereas the regular fragrances have like that straw thing. So I don't know if that matters to you, I thought I'd mention. Scent wise though, I really like it. I can see how, and I wanna preface this, this is not a scent for everyone at all. Again, not mass appealing. This is very, very clean and soapy. Extremely soapy, I would say. It kind of smells like Dove. If you like just the original Dove bar soap, if you've ever used it on your body or face or whatever growing up, if you have any type of like nostalgic feelings for it, if you've ever wanted a fragrance like that, even if you don't like, you know, very super clean fragrances, you want something that smells like Dove, this smells very, very much like Dove. I love clean fragrances. I, they're definitely in like the many, many categories of fragrances I enjoy. And this is a really nice one. Um, it's very simplistic. 
easy to wear, a great kind of post shower fragrance and it lasts like a medium amount of time. It's not anything particularly mind blowing in terms of performance, but also, you know, the price reflects that. And I think considering the price, there's a lot of other cool attributes. It came in like an interesting box. It's got the base included. You don't have to purchase that on, you know, on the side on your own. So I like it. I'm really happy with it. And it's a really, really great soapy dove fragrance. So if you're into that, definitely recommend. On the other side of the spectrum, again, a negative one for me. Uh, this I knew, like I, I really don't understand what I was thinking when I purchased this, why I thought I should. The only thing that comes to mind is I thought it would be a great like review piece for you guys to be able to talk about it because it's supposed to be emulating a Crete fragrance, but even that, I have no idea. This is Derby Clubhouse Blanche um, and it's an eau de toilette and it's by Armoff. Very heavy bottle, I feel like they really put a lot of time and care and attention and money into the bottle. It's extremely heavy. Um, it's got even like a little leather trim here, which is nice in the top scent wise. And this, you know, this falls on me. I'm not familiar with Silver Mountain Water by Creed, what this is trying to be a dupe of. From what I read online, it comes pretty close. It comes around like 90% is what most people say. There's definitely a difference, but you can tell what it's supposed to be. And 90% isn't bad, especially for the price difference. But in that case, I also hate Silver Mountain Water because this is one of the most like metallic green fragrances I have ever smelled in my life. And it really is both those things. It's extremely metallic and green. And I feel like one or the other you can make do, but to have both and for it to be so intense on the metallic side is interesting, no doubt, but very, very hard to wear and extremely non like appealing for a mass market. I don't think this is safe to just blind buy at all. Um, I thought maybe mine had gone bad. Maybe my nose was just not picking it up. I really, really struggled with this one, but honestly, everything I read online, there was a review I read on Fragrantica, which made me laugh. And they said it was like the scent equivalent of eating a, like a roll of tin foil or aluminum foil, whatever you guys call it around the world for your particular country. But it is that, like it's very, metallic. So if you have non metallic fragrances that pull metallic on you and you don't like them, I can only imagine how metallic this is going to be on you because fragrances never turn metallic on me when, when they're not supposed to. And this is metallic. It's super, super metallic. So I don't know. I really don't know how I'm going to wear this. I haven't found anyone in my inner circle who would like decants either. So at least it was inexpensive, but my goodness, not for me. Then kind of again, a little bit um, on the negative side, Bijou Romantique by Etat Libre d'Orange. I think I've come to the conclusion that I got very lucky with my first Etat Libre d'Orange, which was True Lust. I am in love and in lust with that fragrance. It's completely and utterly me. And then I figured like, oh, maybe I'm one of those quirky people that Etat Libre d'Orange totally works for. And both fragrances I've tried after that have not worked. So. I'm gonna give up on the house for a little bit. Um, and this is one that I really tried to make work. And the issue is part of it, part of it smells like Dior Addict, the original. That part I love. There's also a real part of it that smells like toilet bowl cleaner. And I think I mentioned that in other videos, maybe even when I hauled it. And I was like, no, but let's give it some time. And honestly, I still smell that. It's not as bad as this, for example, like I'll definitely wear this and I'm definitely gonna come back to it. And this might be one that in a few months time, I totally fall for, but I feel like this does better in colder weather. And if it's not really impressing me or drawing me to it now, then I can't see myself super drawn to it in the spring and summer. So we'll see what happens. All right. 
So the next one, we're back into the positives. This is a Narciso Rodriguez, and this is just the, the eau de toilette, Narciso eau de toilette, I think. I really like it. I'm pretty sure it's the eau de toilette. Yes, it is. I really like it. I mean, I feel like it's kind of the opposite of Etat Libre d'Orange, where Etat Libre d'Orange is so out there with their fragrances that if you like one, you cannot be guaranteed to like all. But with Narciso Rodriguez, you kind of are. Um, for the most part, if you like one and if you're into that sort of vibe, you're gonna like more or less the house. Obviously, you're gonna have favorites. Obviously, there might be some where you're like, no, and you might be the exception to the rule, but because their musk is so pronounced, their musk note, and it's so particular to the house, like if you're a Nosmic to that, for example, um, then you're gonna be an osmic to all of them, um, that or that note. And if you're really, really into it the way I am, I adore the musk in it, then you're pretty much gonna be into all of them. They might kind of bleed into one another. Like I didn't pick up the ombre because I had the poudre and the, what is it? The poudre and the rouge. So I didn't pick up the ombre because when I smelled it, it smelled pretty close to me. But I picked up the eau de toilette and this one's a little bit more different. It's more floral. I feel like those two are a lot more heavy on the musk and this has that musk, but it's a bit more floral, which I enjoy. But yeah, let me know if you thought the ombre was particularly different because it's a beautiful bottle. But for me, I smelled it in store and it kind of smelled very, very similar to the rouge and the poudre. Then, oh my God, a total love, you guys. This is Escal uh, Portofino by Dior. And this is part of that like, I don't know, I forget now. It's like the Voyage collection or whatever. There were three of these. I remember being in store and being enamored, maybe four, being enamored with them. Like I just wanted all of them. I loved the bottle. I love like the queer canage print that like all the Lady Dior frag or bags have. I love Dior as a fashion house. They are my favorite fashion house. And these bottles I just thought were impeccable. I love the scents. I love the whole vibe. It was very, like summering in Europe kind of feel. And the names pretty much match that. This is a green, um, a slightly green citrusy kind of eau de clone fragrance. It does not have that lasting power that you would want um, if you're used to an eau de parfum or you want it to last a full working day. This is not what that's made for. It's an eau de clone, very European style very much of summertime and oh my goodness what I would give to take this away with me and it to Italy or Greece or something just to go anywhere really right now but this is a beautiful one I would definitely take it away with me and that's another range where if I find the other two or three and they're not like an extortionate price I would break my no buy for because I I just I have like a memory attached to them I really really like it then we get to Lolita Land by Lolita Lampica. I like many people, and this isn't even my vibe of a kind of bottle I'd be into, but I've always been curious about this fragrance because of the bottle. I love the little deer with like swan wings. I don't know, like the pumpkin, whatever. I loved the bottle and I was so happy to get it, even though I was worried that it would be too vanilla -y. And I'm gonna spray it in the air and not on me because it is very vanilla-like and it is very sweet and it is on the borderline of the kind of vanilla that I can't wear. Um, just like Hypnos by Lancome, I have to be in the mood and prepped and in vanilla mode because this is a very, I don't know, it's, I struggle with vanilla and I've gotten a lot better, but this is on that borderline where it's like, edging into what I call Bath and Body Works vanilla. Not that it smells like that, but when it gets close to that area of vanilla, it gets hard for me. If it's darker and richer and it's got like cinnamon and it's boozy, I can wear it a lot easier. Um, or if it's like a vanilla powder or like vanilla frosting, again, I'm good. But this, whatever that is, is hard. So I wear it sparingly, but I don't hate it. I just have to be in the mood for it. The thing I will mention though, if you like this fragrance or if you suspect you will, the lasting, pa this is a beast mode fragrance. Oh my God. The reason I didn't want to spray it on me is because I'm not in the mood for it today. 
and it will last all of today and on my clothing I'll wake up with it on like this is an incredibly performing for fra fragrance so it's got that going for it then second to last we've got Soleil by Lalique I have the little I don't know if it's like 15 mil or something like that I'm not sure but anyways this is what I've got I like it this is something where it's very easy to wear for me. It's very beachy without being sunscreen-like. It's got a whole lot of beachy white florals in there, but it's just like its own take on it. It's a little more interesting, a little bit more floral rather than being like super sunscreen coconutty. Um, but it's it's got that feel to it. It's a summertime fragrance. If you like those type of beachy floral fragrances, you're gonna like this. It's nothing particularly out there mind-blowing but I like it and I'm into those kind of fragrances so it's an easy one to grab and it's a smaller one so it'd be great for my purse and then finally last but not least we have Arba Wardat by Rosasi I think yeah and this is a perfume oil I was just really drawn to it Arba Wardat means four flowers and I was like okay perfect perfect floral for me to get um like with practically all perfume oils. It's gonna last forever. If you put it on clothing, which I've done before, carefully, like clothing that I knew it wouldn't stain, like pajamas and stuff that were like, I don't know, fluffy. Um, yeah, it lasts for days and days and days and the sillage on it is particularly beautiful as well. This, I'm gonna put some on my thumb here. Um, it has an element to it that some people have mentioned before gets a bit um like cologne like which you don't expect because it's very floral and feminine but i don't think it's it's very cologne in the way that people think i feel like that might scare people off from picking it up it's more so that it's got like a touch of fresh cleanness that is used a lot in like men's cleaner fragrances but in general, it's very, very floral, extremely floral. So you'd have to be into that. And if you want to try out perfume oils and you do enjoy florals, this is a really nice inexpensive one that will last you and your whole family a lifetime. So I hope you guys enjoyed this second impressions video. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.